Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul here to show you a brand new video card with a brand new GPU. This is the EVGA GeForce GTX 680 with the brand new Kepler GPU from NVIDIA. So let's just take a look at a few of the specs here on the box. Apart from EVGA being number one, we also find out that this has a two gigabyte memory buffer. That's GDDR5 memory. Uh, the memory also runs at 1.5 gigahertz on a 256 bit interface. Uh, you also get all of the features uh, that the uh, 580 had as well as the 680, that is SLI compatibility, DirectX 11 compatibility. Of course, you get physics, acceleration, as well as all the CUDA cores, 3D vision surround. Uh, the newest thing is that this is a PCI Express Revision 3.0 card. So uh, you get PCIe Rev 3. Don't worry, it is backwards compatible with Revision 2. Uh, it's also capable of four-way SLI. Inside the box here, we have an assortment of special treats from EVGA, starting with a driver disc, which... So might as well just take out. There's your driver disk. Uh, you can use this for, to start off, but it's best to download the latest drivers from the EVGA or even better, the NVIDIA website, uh, especially with a brand new GPU. They're going to be updating those drivers, and you'll want the latest ones for best compatibility and performance. You also get a powered by EVGA case badge right there. Uh, you get some enthusiast built stickers there in a couple different colors. Well, all the same colors, just different arrangements of the colors. Uh, you get an EVGA guide, uh, graphics card user guide, so basic information in here on installing a graphics card and all that good stuff. Some information now, what is this? This is the specific GeForce GTX 680 quick start guide here with some more information about your GTX 680, as well as uh, this card is PCI Express 3.0 already, so it's telling you how to plug that in. Uh, again, PCIe 3.0 is physically the same as PCIe 2.0. Uh, you might get a little bit of boost in performance, but it's really a bandwidth, bandwidth improvement. So uh, it's not a huge deal if you don't have a PCIe Generation 3 motherboard yet. You will still be compatible. Now here's some more information on plugging your video card. Here is some more information on how to properly connect your power to the video card and also to make sure don't touch a video card while it's hot because you might burn yourself. Here's a poster. EVGA does like to include posters with their graphics card. What's this say? I can't even see it. I'll just show it here for you guys. Whatever that says, I'm sure it's pretty sweet. I see some ammunition there. So EVGA poster put up in your room. Maybe get a poster frame. And uh, here's the video card itself, which I'm going to come back to in just a minute. Uh, here are your adapters. So you get a analog uh, a DVI, digital DVI to analog VGA uh, D-sub connector right there. Uh, and then you get a couple power adapters right here. So these are the same power adapter. They will both just take a couple Molex plugs and transfer it to a six pin PCI Express plug. You get two of those because that's what the card has is two six pin PCI Express plugs. You can use those or you can get a power supply that already has those. and. Uh, That'll probably be better. Speaking of power supply, 550 watt uh, is the minimum recommended uh, by NVIDIA for a stock GTX 680. That said, let's take a look at the video card itself. And here's a look at the EVGA GeForce GTX 680 itself. As you can see, the entire video card has a black plastic shroud over the cooling solution. Cooling solution is located primarily right under the center area here. It has a blower style fan, so uh, air from your case is going to move into the fan right there and it's going to be uh, ejected little bit out the back, it's got a bit of a gap there at the back of the card. Primarily, your exhaust is going to come out your ventilation holes there on your PCI slots. Uh, apart from that, you get some EVGA logo logoing. You get GeForce GTX there on the side, as well as an additional EVGA sticker, which I'm guessing, and I'm correct, has a little bit of plastic on it. I always like to peel those off. It's so fun. Okay, here's uh, your power requirements, and you have six I'm sorry, you have two six-pin PCI Express power connectors right there, and the total TDP, TDP, or thermal design power of this card, is 195 watts, so don't even need an eight-pin PCI Express power connector. It can get all the juice it needs from the two six-pins there, as well as the power that's pulled from the, PC, uh, the PCI Express bus. All right, there's your PCIe 3.0. Uh, slot again that is backwards compatible PCI Express Generation 2 and of course forwards compatible with PCI Express Generation 3 and that's going to get you additional bandwidth uh, for a bit of a performance boost 
here at the back of the card, you can see a few things. Uh, for starters, you got your SLI connectors up there at the top. Two of those means that it is compatible with two-way, three-way, or four-way SLI configurations. Uh, you can't see the GPU on this card, but it would be right below that uh, X pattern connector right there where the uh, thermal solution is mounted. Uh, some information about that GPU, the uh, core is a GK104 core in the Kepler series, codenamed Kepler. It has 1,536 CUDA cores. Uh, also on the card you have memory, and of course that is a 2 gigabyte DDR5 mem uh, memory buffer. Uh, you get 1.5 gigahertz uh, transfer speed from that memory, 256-bit uh, interface. Uh, and then the, the Kepler core, again, coming back to it because it has some cool features. One of them is called boost clock. So the core clock, base clock speed, or the base speed of the, core, of the GPU is 1,006 megahertz. And then uh, the GPU can automatically overclock itself and give it a bit of a boost and jump up to 1,058 megahertz boost clock. And it will only enable that when needed, so it will keep the uh, power and thermals down a little bit when it's not in use, and then when you uh, load up a game, it will, it will jump into boost clock mode and give you some extra juice. Uh, another cool feature about this card, flipping over here to the, uh, the display outputs here at the back, uh, you'll notice there are four display outputs, and you can use all of those at once. You can push four monitors with this single video card. Uh, you can't use all four for gaming. It's a three plus one display setup, so you can use three of these together and give yourself a surround, a surround gaming setup with three monitors. And then you can use a fourth monitor uh, as a, an accessory monitor, and you can set that up, for instance, uh, with web, you know, for web browsing, or uh, maybe you have a chat client, something like that. You can pop up on that monitor and give yourself some additional screen space for the stuff that uh, you're not using for your 3D gaming. Here are your DVI outputs, so you get two of those. Uh, top one here is a DVI-I. I'm sorry, DVI-D, which is digital. So uh, that analog converter that comes in the box, don't use that with this top one because that is digital only. And then on the bottom, you have a DVI-I, and that uh, also has the analog uh, connectors there on the right side in that little square pattern. Uh, both of these are dual links, so they do support higher resolutions. Uh, you also have this guy under there, which is an HDMI out. And then finally, you have right under there, which is your display port out. And now for a quick measurement, just to make sure the, this card will fit in your chosen computer case. So measured from the bracket there on the end, the card is just a couple, maybe a millimeter or two over 10 inches. So not a super long card. Uh, it should fit in most gaming cases right out of the box. And one other thing I wanted to mention for those of you guys who are interested, at the Game Developers Conference this year, they ran a demonstration of a game called Samaritan. And uh, what they were doing was comparing a single GTX 680 to three GTX 580s running in SLI. And they had some interesting numbers there comparing the two. So for a single GTX 680, you have 195 watts of power required. For three 580s, that's 732. For the 680, the heat output was 660 BTUs. For the three 580s, the heat output was 2,500 BTUs. And finally, for no noise output, the 680 put out 46 decibels, and the three GTX 580s put out 51 decibels. So, uh, and they were both running the exact same demo. So there you can see the difference between 580 moving up to 680, and uh, there's going to be more cards, again, released in this line in the future. But that's going to wrap it up. This has been the first card we have seen in the GTX 600 series of Kepler GPU-based video cards. This has been the EVGA GTX 680. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.